Hi everyone, welcome to Java Techie. Being a Spring Boot developers, we are always excited to get the latest features from the Spring Boot community. And I believe everyone knows that Spring Boot has published the final release version of 3.0 on 22 November. This Spring Boot 3 design is based on the Spring Framework 6 version, which changes a lot of things we need to take care of during the application development in the future. So let us highlight these features to understand them better in this tutorial. Okay, so without any further delay, let's get started. So now follow me to see what major changes Spring Boot 3.0 will have. We'll discuss each and every features with practical example. But before that, I just want to give you the heads up on each and every features. Now Spring Boot 3.0 will support Java 17. While there was already support for Java 17 before, this long term support version now gets the baseline in Spring Boot 3.0. Okay, next Jakarta. Another important change is that after this upgrade, it only supports Jakarta doubly using the Servlet 5.0 and JPA 3.0 specification. Some of you may not even know what is Jakarta is. This English word means Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. We know that Java or you can say J2E is called as a Jakarta EE after it is renamed. For example, our previous javax.servlet package is now called jakarta.servlet. Therefore, all imports that use objects such as HTTP servlet request or HTTP servlet response in the code need to be modified and need to use the proper import statement instead of javax, you need to use the jakarta going forward. Okay, if you are using Spring Boot 3.0. Next, Spring Native. Spring Native is also a major feature of the upgrade. It supports using Graal VM to compile Spring application into locally executable image file, which can significantly improve the startup speed and peak performance and reduce memory uses. Okay, no worries. Whatever the theory we are discussing, each and every point I will show you in the code with the example. Okay, let's move to the next one. Observability, which is nothing from your application using this particular API or using this particular class, you can publish your metrics so that it can be mapped or it can be tracked easily using the Zipkin and Sleuth in your cloud infrastructure. Or it can publish as a metrics to the any board. It can be a Grafana or Prometheus. Okay. Next, another class called problem detail. So whatever the HTTP specific error you want to map in your application or in your project, you can directly using you can directly use this problem detail class to map your HTTP status specific error. Okay. Next dependency upgrade. Spring Framework 6 and Spring Boot 3 need the following minimum version. When I say following, you must need to use the Kotlin 1.7 plus, not less than that. Also, you must need to use the Lombok 1.18 above if you are using JDK 17 support. And also you make sure to use the Gradle. 7.3 plus version not less than that these you need to keep in your mind if you are using the spring boot 3.0 okay now next is http exchange so you can have native support for declarative http client interface using this other http exchange annotation so for different http method this annotation is other gate exchange for gate method for post other post exchange the method is also different uh, if you are using different HTTP method. This is similar to the Fain client. The way you are able to consume the provider or to consume the API using the Fain client. Similar way, you can design your declarative REST client using this annotation. So these are the theory so far we discussed. Now let's try to implement same theory in action. So let me quickly create a new project. I will go to the start.spring.io. Then I will choose the project type as Maven. Let me zoom this for you. And language is Java. And if you observe, I am just using the 3.0.0, .0, which is the latest version. Okay. And then I will just change the group ID here, com.javatechie. 
and that effect I will give let's say spring or I'll just give spring boot lat test okay then I will just keep the package as com.java tick key I will remove everything packaging mode let it be jar and I am using the java version 17 which is the baseline for spring boot 3.0 even you can use the 19 but I am not sure whether 19 will support for 3.0 or not but let's go with this 17 now let me add few dependency I will add web dependency then I will add actuated dependency so that I can show you the behavior of this observability actuator using that I can expose few metrics so you can verify that then I will just add um, reactive spring reactive web so that I can show you a declarative way of defining your rest client okay cool now let me create this project I will directly import it to the IntelliJ idea let me go to the IntelliJ idea then I will just import the new project go to the download spring boot latest just open it it will take few seconds to download all the dependency so it imported successfully now let's go to the pom.xml then we'll verify the version we are using 3.0 which is the latest version and we are using java dot version 17 make sure you should have installed this jdk 17 okay otherwise it won't work and then we just added the actuator dependency spring boot starter web and spring boot starter web flux these are the three dependency we added and nothing else fine so since i added java version 17 i can use its all features i can use the records i can use the switch expression i can use each and every feature of this jdk 17 but before that i will just verify once whether the environment is pointing to 17 yeah it's pointing to the 17 17 I can use these features okay cool now let me create couple of packages so I'll just write a package called DTO then you can create separate controller class or what we can do let's create two different packages okay controller and service so I'll name it service I'll name the package controller that's fine we will think about the other package if you will implement something now what I am basically going to do in this example will simply expose two or three endpoints so that I can show you each and every features we discuss as part of this Spring Boot 3.0 so let's quickly create a DTO class so new Java class let me give the class name as customer but since I am using the Java 17 I no need to create the class I can create the record record is something similar to the class in Java 17 if you are writing a class then you may need to write uh, two string or equals as code method or uh, other method right getter and setter before a lumbo but if you are using record then everything is inbuilt you just define the field you want as part of the constructor that's it okay so I'll just create a record let me zoom this now inside this you need to define the field let me define id string name um, what else string email string gender okay that's it let's go with this four attribute so since this is my record class i no need to define the getter by default you cannot define any setter method in the record this is one of the drawback i found but if you no need to define the getter method based on the field the get method will work and this will act as your controller class I mean uh, constructor sorry my bad fine so this is what sim something similar to the class before Java 14 because this record concept uh, introduced in Java 14 right so before Java 14 we are writing the class but Java 14 onwards you can define the class in such a way so that it will be more meaningful okay so since we are using java 17 let's use its features fine now let me create a service class new java class i'll name it let's say customer service let me zoom this then what i'll do i'll just create a static list then i'll just keep 
um, I'll keep adding the least object to, I mean customer object to that list. It's kind of crowd application, but rather than using the DV, I'm just using the plain list. So I'll just create a list of customer. customers or customer list equal to new array list fine then I will write a method we will add a customer object to the list and we will retrieve all the customer object from the list public so simply I can return the customer object add customer then give the customer object as input I will add in the list okay customer list dot add the new object then simply I'll ju just return the same customer object fine then I'll write another method will return me the list of customer from the list I mean see you can connect to a DV to make it simple I just write the static list okay so I'll write a method public will return me the list of customer get customers then I'll simply return the list okay so what is the list customer list now also for handling the exception uh, kind of scenario to show you the example of problem details let me write another method to handle the exception so let's say public will return me the single customer object by given input ID get customer give the ID which is int ID so how I will get the customer by existing ID since I am not using the DV I will iterate the list and I will filter based on the ID if there is no customer object present with this ID I will throw some exception ok so what I will do simply I will just return um, I will need to iterate the list right convert it to the stream then I just want to filter it what is that the ID which I am giving or I will just try with the customer object ok customer dot get not get ID ok because in record the field name will act as a getter method ID equal equal to the ID I am giving if you find any then get it or else throw the exception so for now I'll just throw some runtime exception new runtime exception give some message let's say customer not found with ID the given input fine so let me add the semicolon makes sense right so we created three method one will add the customer to the I mean in the list and one will retrieve everything from the list one will filter from the list based on the ID and if that customer is not present with this ID it will throw the exception cool I need to annotate this at the red service now let's create the controller class I'll just create a class I'll name it customer controller let me zoom this I need to define this at the rate rest controller fine then I need to inject the service here private customer service service simply auto edit then I'll just reuse the method I mean I can directly copy these methods right so that I can just change the call of the I mean from the controller I will call the service so I will not I don't need this statement I will simply use return there is something wrong return I will just use service dot add customer right and pass the customer object this approach is similar I mean there is no change the way you are writing controller and service I mean creating the bean or defining the controller those things is same in each and every version in the spring boot ok so I will show you the difference but I just want to write the endpoint so that I can show it to you so I will just call here service dot get 
customers then i'll just change it to the i mean this is the controller right controller will talk to the service so from the controller i'm just calling the service method id fine so i need to define the http annotation here i can define here this should be the post mapping because i am giving the object and i can define the url here or i will define in the class label but since i am giving the object i need to define this at the red request body and this should be the get mapping because i am just retrieving it okay and then this should be also get mapping by id so i'll give the url as id and this i want to pass as part of the request url so i need to use the path variable fine we are well and good we just define the controller and we just define the service class now let, let's discuss each and every point we discuss okay i mean let's try to implement whatever we discuss here so java 17 support already we added the java 17 in our code and we created the record class you can also use the other feature of java 17 now what is the next jakarta okay so if you'll go in your code and if you'll write any any class let's say i am just using here http servlet http servlet request okay or response any class okay can you see here the input statement jakarta dot servlet dot http anything came from the uh, http you can see here jakarta servlet dot http request wrapper also jakarta dot servlet dot http i mean as you discuss all the javax package converted to the jakarta okay so you can give a try with any http class and you can try using this jakarta specific import statement for now i don't need anything so to show you the package name got uh, renamed that is the reason i just write this class fine so format it now what is the next the next is spring native i'll come to that point then we will we'll need to discuss about this observability and problem details so first let's go with the problem details then we'll come to this particular observability feature so what is this problem details as i already mentioned when you are dealing with error specific to the http then you must need to use this problem detail if you are not using it's not not crime okay you, you can still go with your custom approach but since spring boot 3.0 is giving these problem details let's try to understand how we can use it cool so this particular method i have added the validation if the id will not found then cry with the exception so what i will do for this i will just try to use the problem detail so since you know how to handle the exception in spring boot let's quickly write a class i mean i will create a package first let's say advice spelling mistake then we'll create one controller advice class to handle the exception specific to the my application this is what something the global exception handler we already discussed before so let me create a class customer exception sorry something going wrong new java class exception handler let me zoom this now the first annotation i need to define your other at rest controller advice then i'll write a method public usually what we do we created another dto called let's say something like this right we usually create a another dto class called error then we just define here let's say uh, private http status code okay and any anything error code or error message let's say private int error code then error message or something like that usually we create such kind of structure right private string error message usually we define such kind of method i mean such kind of class and we define all the getter and setter everything so you can also try that now i mean anyway we are not going to use this error class 
that is the reason we have the problem detail class right so what i want to return here problem detail just tell me the detail explanation about your problem i will handle the response pattern okay so that is the reason this is the class introduced i mean this problem detail implementation introduced in spring web mbc 6 version i mean in this spring boot 3.0 so you can write a method let's say on exception occurs on which type of exception if i am getting runtime of exception i mean runtime exception then just i will use the java 17 um, i will just name it bar pd problem details equal to um, just use the problem detail class okay then we'll find the method for status and detail so just use that method just define what is the status and what is the detail you want to return so status if this runtime exception occurs i want to return the status as a bad request so i can use http status code value of 400 and what is the detail message you want to return whatever the message i will get from the message i mean whatever the warning or message i am throwing in my back end i just want to map that map your status and detail about your exception okay apart from that you have also option to define pd dot set see here you can also manually define the title of your error type of your error any property if you have any instance if you have everything you can define but for now i will just return this with only status code and error message so this method i need to define at the red exception handler and i need to tell him for which type of exception it need to handle if you are getting this type of exception class then execute this method map the status code and um, error message to this particular problem detail class okay and then return it back fine this is what something the exception handling mechanism so let's run it then we'll jump to the next feature about the observability okay so let's go with this problem details first so let me go to the IntelliJ idea i'll go to the main class this is the main class right so i can run it but before that did you define the endpoint url no so what i'll do i'll just use request mapping here and i'll define the root url let's say customers okay or i'll just define customers info as a root url anything is fine so now let me quickly run the application go to the main class then i will simply run it so you can see here application started on port 8080 and just keep a note of this time okay this will help you to understand about the spring native okay so this took 4.796 seconds so the port is 8080 now let's hit the endpoint go to the customer controller customers info is the url and i need to pass the customer as object fine so i have the object ready let me send the request record got inserted i will add another object let's say two name let's say santos mail id santos send the request now if i will fetch all the request it should return me the two object right I'm getting two object here. Can you see here? 101 and 102. Now let me try one thing. I will just fetch by ID 101. Sorry, this should be get right. Send the request. I'm getting button. I'll give 102. I'll get um, Santos. Now let me give something which is not there. 108. You can remove this payload is not required since this is the gate send the request can you see here the object part of the problem detail type is nothing we didn't specify anything it is blank title is nothing the bad request 
status is 400 detail customer not found with id these were the error message we have given and instance is nothing the end point which you hit you can customize this field as well type title status based on your requirement but you no need to deal with couple of error object class or some of the mapper class to handle this kind of error message you can directly use the problem detail class to define the error message okay now let's move to the next one that is observability which will help you to publish the metrics of your application so that it can be visualized for the easily track purpose you can use the zipkin and sleuth as a spring cloud infrastructure or you can publish it to the prometheus and grafana so i'll show you in the code how you can achieve this observability features using the spring boot 3.0 so let's go to the intellij idea i will implement this in the service class okay so what i will do here the approach is very simple so just take the help of the observations class so there uh, rather than return the customer object what i will do i will just use observations okay this is the class see here the input statement came from the io dot what is there io dot micrometer okay observation dot observation i mean this will help you to publish the metrics to the micrometer and any other third party just use the method create if it's not started what is the name of your api this is my add customer i am just defining my own metric name then registry you just need to use another class of it which is nothing the observation registry observation registry just use the auto add here okay then just use that registry directly then just return what you want okay so the method name dot observe i guess yeah and it took the supplier which is the functional interface so what i can do i can simply return the object which i want to return i just want to return the same object right which i am adding into the dv i mean in the list i'll return the same object fine so i am taking the help of observation class then create not started define your metric name and just inject the registry given by the micrometer and then expect or just specify what you want to return as part of this metrics so next i'll write in the get customer method you can also write here so what i can do i'll just copy this then we'll change the return type so i'll just change the return type which is nothing the list right customer list this will be get customers this this is the metric name okay this is very simple rather than keep duplicating the code you can extract this code to some um, generic way so that you can define any as a return type to the defined matrix so here also i will just do one thing i will simply copy everything or i can do it here only okay so i will just copy everything now here this is get customer not customers now what i want to return here the entire code just define it inside here fine just remove this semicolon so just this is my metric name and publish this if it is succeed give the customer object or else throw the exception which will be handled by the problem detail as a object response so i have defined the observation in each and every method now since we enable the actuator what you need to do go to your application dot properties file then it you need to define few key and value just define it management endpoint web exposure include expose all the endpoint of the actuator and then health show details always and this is for problem details i mean by default it is enabled you no need to define it but if you want to disable it this is what the option okay by default it is enabled if you want to disable then you must need to include this key and value 
and this is what something you know about the actuator nothing to explain here now what i'll do i will just rerun the code to check how the matrix looks like and whatever the matrix i created here add customer get customer and get single customer object by id whether it is showing me in the matrix list or not just restart it so it started and also keep a note of the startup time let me zoom this the startup time it took 4.482 second now think here without having any db connection database connection it is taking this much time if i will write, write the jp related stuff then how much time it will take near 2 8 to 9 second i believe okay so that is how something i can tell you how you can optimize this using the spring native so that is fine but before that can you see here it is posing 13 endpoints so that is the reason we just define the application dot properties this key okay endpoint web exposure include all that's that's fine you learn it about the i mean in the actuator class i don't want to repeat it now let's verify the matrix so just go here i'll just check here actuator uh, what is that matrix right can you see here these are the matrix application ready time i mean lot of matrix you can just do a post mortem of it and try to understand what all matrix does so we cannot see our matrix name here right because we didn't access those endpoint after we restart our application so just do one thing quickly add few object then verify it let me add a customer 101 basant i'll add the customer second customer 102 santosh so i try to access this post method with this customers info endpoint two times and now i am just verifying one get api to fetch a single customer by id send the request we are getting the response here right now we'll also hit the local host i mean to get all the customers i just want to hit that particular endpoint so i'll just copy this url i'll just go to the chrome and i will paste it i'll zoom this i'll try try accessing this particular method two three times okay i mean i didn't i don't count how much time i hit but it should be more than four or five i believe that's fine now let's see whether the matrix whatever we have defined in our service is getting printed here or not can you see here get customer is there uh, add customer is there you can see here let me zoom this this is what add customer and then get customer get customers okay you can verify each matrix and their status so what i will do i will just verify actuator matrix and then give the matrix name can you see here i tried accessing that particular get customers method seven time and total time it takes and max and if there is any error tag you can find this statement here i mean the this entire json object as a matrix you can publish to the any dashboard third party dashboard which is displaying the matrix of your application it's not specific you can use the zipkin and sleuth or grafana or prometheus that's fine that is up to you and let's verify the other okay another is add customer i tried this method two times because i added two object let's see whether the count is correct or not can you see here the count is two okay and this is the total time and max time this is the error tag now what is the next that is get customer i tried it for one time i believe so let's check that okay i tried it for one time so this is how you can define your custom matrix in your dashboard okay so that is how this particular um, observation class will help you which is introduced in spring boot 3.0 so you can deep dive further about this observation and observability features so once you will get a time or i will share some resource in the video description you can go deeper and try to understand how this work fine now let's move to the important feature that is spring native okay so before i explain spring native i just want to tell you why do we need spring native it is not complex 
so you can understand quickly now as i already show you how much time it takes 4.482 seconds to start up the server the reason i'll tell you since this is the traditional application what it does it compiled all the classes into bytecode then interpreted by jvm and finally compiled into machine code to run so each and every time when we will start your server it will load all the class it will generate the byte code then it will interpreted by jvm and finally compiled into the machine code to run so each and every time if this process will run then definitely it will take time right so that is how to avoid this you can use the spring native which is nothing this spring native use something called ahead of time so while spring native is compiled into machine code in advance through this ahead of time okay and statistically compiled into executable file directly at run time depends on the jvm what you are using don't worry i will show you how this executable file will be generated and how you can use this ahead of time feature of this spring native using graal va so let's jump into that so before that make sure you need to install the graal vm on your system which is another virtual machine like jvm so how you can do that i have the documentation here so let me zoom this you can download the graal vm from here if you will open this let's see it, it depends which operating system you are using based on that you will get either the link or you will get the download i mean download link so you can choose windows or mac and you can use this particular thing so once you install this on your machine it will suggest you some steps to do okay that is what i am going to do now but once you will try on your machine it will suggest you to do some steps because you need to point out your java runtime and everything to this graal vm not your core jvm okay using this graal vm you can achieve this aot spring native feature that is what something the interesting release as part of this spring boot 3.0 now i already did this now what is the steps it will show you once you download or install it this is what something you will find here okay i mean see this is what for my operating system so make sure x code select install this must need to be installed this x code and then now if i will show you here go to the intellij idea if i will go to the terminal if i will type your java hyphen version see here now it's pointing to my jvm java 17 right i cannot zoom this right yeah it's fine can you see here it's pointing to the 17.0.5 and the run time is also jvm specific not graal vm specific so how i can do that you can just follow this step just set the graal vm home and its path and corresponding java home so i'll quickly run this i mean you know how to set the java home or m2 home right similar way you can just set the graal vm home i mean i didn't find these steps over the youtube no one explained about how you can do the setup of, uh, of the graal vm but this particular blocks really helps you if you you can follow this and you can do the setup for your graal vm on your machine i will share this link in video description okay so what i will do enter it then i will set the path of it just export the path and give the path where this located just paste it now just define the java home which will point to this graal vm okay so just copy and paste it that's it now if i'll run this java hyphen version you'll find something different here let me show you okay so what what is the jdk i am using open jdk of 17.0.5 and what is the run time i am using graal vm run time open jdk 64 bit for graal vm okay you can compare these two before graal vm and after adding the graal vm i mean you need to manually choose what java virtual machine you want to use whether it is your core jvm or graal vm but for this spring boot 3.0 to achieve this spring native feature it's recommended to use the graal vm now what next as we already discussed what this spring native does behind the scene it will generate one executable file for you at run time so so that whenever you will start your application it will 
load that executable file and it will quickly boost your application. So generating the executable file only will take time in the Spring Native. Going forward as many times you will start your server, it will quickly up within a fraction of a second. So let's see how I can generate the executable file. Just use the below command. I mean this is the simple command mbn hyphen p native. That is what we want to generate the executable file using Spring Native. And I just want to skip the test case hyphen d skip test and then native compile the image okay so while compiling and to generate the executable file first time it will take time then going forward as many time you will start that executable file it will start in fraction of second it will not take uh, four second or five second or ten second the way our traditional approach takes the time okay so let's see when you will run this what is the steps it is following just enter it i will make this up because everything will play with the terminal now so as usual it will just compile your class and all everything but we just keep the test case right so let's see so what it is doing graal vm reachability uh, graal vm installation so it is loading everything see the steps it is initializing then what is the next yeah it, it will load everything here see and it will take minimum three i believe three minute or four minute based on the number of classes and number of the dependence you have in your code it is loading everything so th this is the step one it will perform the seven step initialize it will evaluate the performance as well so let's wait all the steps to complete you can see here it takes some time then it initiate the second step performing analysis so again it will take few seconds or minutes usually the first time it will take time okay then going forward uh, we'll see the difference in the startup time so again let's wait it to complete third step it initiate building universe even i don't i am not aware about this terminology but we'll see what all steps is displaying in the console I don't know what it does in this third step. Fourth step, parsing the methods. It will it will keep on um, taking the time to execute it. We'll wait again for a few seconds. Next step, inlining the methods, and then compiling the methods. Yeah, it will complete all seven steps. Now the last step it is executing creating the image so we'll see it took five minutes first time it will take five minutes but now again i will try to generate the executable file it don't take much time it most probably it will complete within the three minutes because few of the steps is already um, done in the previous uh, time right so what is the top 10 packages in code area top 10 object types in image heap i mean there are some info I am not aware about all but yeah, I can show you the executable file if you don't know where is your executable file just follow this path okay spring boot latest build artifact.txt so it will show you which one is your artifact just go to the target okay can you see here if you will open this txt file it will tell you which is your executable file name my executable file name is nothing the project name what I created spring hyphen boot hyphen latest and this is what the executable file okay now what I'll do I'll just start it I'll clear everything okay then what I'll do I'll just point to the target and the name of my executable file spring hyphen boot hyphen latest okay already my server is up and running on port 8080 right so i need to stop this before i start it uh, control c i mean can you see here what is the time it takes 0 0.219 seconds which is nothing in millisecond right now let me stop it and we'll try it again 0 0.205 
again we'll verify 0.218 i mean you can give try for couple of time you'll definitely found the time difference and this is not something um, you will worried about the time right because this this is something very minimal time and we are getting application startup with this fraction of second which is something beyond our uh, hand right which is completely out of the box so just run it see here 0.226 now let's see whether we are able to access our apis or not just add few of the object again i mean this is the list we created right every time i will start the server the list will be clear uh, okay fine i can verify with the one object also we'll just go and check here customers info object is there right it is working i mean the application is up and running on the port 8080 successfully which is nothing the executable file if you'll do any change just regenerate the executable file and start your server and regenerating the executable file will not take much time max 3 minute if you did it first time i mean if you did it before then starting the server will again will be in the fraction of second fine this is what something about the spring native and its uh, ahead of time features using the graal vm now the next or the last which is http exchange as i already mentioned you can define the declarative rest client for your application using this at the rate http exchange annotation so even already we know how we can work with the fain client right so that is what something similar you can achieve using this at the rate http exchange so let's try it out let's create a new project for the client so i'll go to the spring initializer again i'll just change the name here I'll name it something. I mean, I can change the artifact ID. Customer client. So I'll just remove the package com dot java tiki. Let everything will be same. I'll also remove this actuator dependency. I don't need it because I just want to consume the customer service which I designed just now. So just generate the project. let's import this project in intellij quickly just click on file open go to the download customer client open this project looks good now just check the pom.xml 3.0 which is the latest and we added the jdk 17 and we have the web web flux fine now i just want to consume the end point of this uh, spring boot latest project whatever we define i just want to consume let me go to the controller class let's say i'll try for the one api okay i just want to consume this particular api what is the url to consume this api slash customers info and which type of method this is get and what is the return type list of customer so if you remember how usually we do using the fain client the approach is same so first i need to copy this dto right so let me copy this i mean you can return the string or you can get the object and you can use the object mapper but let me follow the same i'll just copy this dto you can remove this error it's not required then i will just create a client package i will create a class um let me name it customer client service let's zoom this i will annotate at the rate service fine now it's not required i guess service is not required because i just want to use the http uh, method to define the declarative rest client so the annotation is straight forward the way you are defining other request mapping and we are defining the root url similarly you can define http exchange this is the recent 
annotation introduced as part of Spring Boot 3.0 to consume any web services. So here you can define your root URL. What is the root URL you want to consume? Slash customers info, right? If you go here, you can copy the URL. Just go back. I'll close this project. Fine. Just go to the client and just define the URL. Now, what is the API you want to consume from the service? This is what the API, right? Who will return me the list of customers? So I'll just copy this and just paste it. I, you can give any name, okay? Get all customers. Why oh, this guy is crying? Okay, anyway, you can keep it interface. Anyway, you are not going to give any implementation. You just want to consume it. You can remove public. By default, every method is public. So that's it. Now, just you need to mention which type of method is this. This is type of get. So the annotation is get exchange. Okay. So you will try for the post. The annotation will be same post exchange. Similarly, for put, put exchange. For delete, delete exchange. Okay. Similarly, for any other HTTP method, let's say patch, patch exchange. But this particular method which I want to consume will return me the list of customer which is of type get. So I no need to define others. I can go with the get exchange. But already I define post and another get. You can give a try of it. I'll just demonstrating with the get. Fine. So this is what the root URL. Now this is the client service. So what I'll do, I'll just create a controller class to consume it. So I'll create another package controller. I'll just create a class. Let's say uh, any any name you can give. Okay. Let's say customer client controller. I need to define this with other traced controller. Since we added the Spring Web Flux dependency, you can go with the functional style of coding. But to make it simple, I'm just going with the rest controller, which is the traditional approach. Okay, now here I need to inject customer client service because that is what my client using that I can communicate to the customer service which is my provider client service. Okay, just use auto add. But if you observe carefully, this is one interface. We cannot create any object of any interface or abstract class. Then how this will work? This will not work. Once you will run it, it will cry. The reason, you cannot create the object of interface. But I want to consume the service. I want to consume my provider endpoint. So you need one medium or you need one intermediate between your client and producer so that you can make a communication between these two services. Usually we use REST template or web client, right? Since we have the Webflux dependency, let's create the bean of web client then we'll register this client to the web client. Okay, so that you can able to access direct method from here. So how you can do that? Let me quickly create a config package. Then I'll create a class. Let's say app client config. Then I will just annotate here at the rate configuration. First, I need to create a bean of web client, right? So I'll just use public web client, web client. So you can use the builder of web client. I'll just use return web client builder dot build. And you can also additionally define the endpoint which you want to access. What is the root URL of it? you can just define the base URL which is nothing HTTP local host 8080 that is where your producer is up and running right 
if you'll check this spring boot lattice which is nothing your provider it's up and running on port 8080 so that is what you need to define the endpoint now next once you have the web client you need to register your client application which is customer client service into this web client and to do that you need the help of another class or another proxy factory class which is http service proxy factory so for that how you can do that it's very simple step just annotate this other red bin now the next step just create public and return the object of my client which is customer client service fine so let's say post client and any name you can give okay then simply just take the help of http um what is the class name service proxy proxy factory http service proxy factory equal to again use the builder of it and in this builder method just one second i'll just add it down so that it will be better visible in builder just register this web client how you can register that there is a class called web client adapter or something like yeah web client adapter dot for client what is the client already i created object of it or bin of it which is web client fine now once you have that then just register your customer client service as a client to this http service proxy factory so just return http service proxy factory dot um, something called create yeah create client and give the who, who is your client class okay just define that simple guys don't be confused if you are working on the real time project this configuration you no need to write daily right you might need to write the consumer logic daily i mean day to day your life you might need to consume any other third party api this is the way you need to api but this configuration you need to do one time so just define at the red bin okay this is simple just create the bin of web client and then register your client class to the web client with the help of this http service proxy factory and then tell to this proxy who is your client class now since i injected here in the controller class spring will able to create the object of fit not it will not create the object of interface it will create the object of proxy of your web client to communicate to your producer okay now i'll write a method here public will return me the list of customer i'll give the method name get or fetch customers i mean this will call to your producer which is running on 8080 our first application okay how it will call simply it will return client service dot get all customers okay this particular client service dot get all customers will hit to the this particular endpoint which is running on port 8080 fine then now i need to define here at the red gate mapping i'll just define the url here because this is only the consumer i have rest slash consumer or uh, i'll name it here customer service slash rest slash consumer so i'll also define one root url request mapping customer service slash rest slash consumer fine this is running on port 8080 so we no need to restart it since we write our separate client but if you'll write anything if you'll do change on your main class which is the producer you need to rebuild the executable file that you need to remember so what i'll do now i'll just start this application meanwhile i need to change the port of it because already something is running on the 8080 server dot port i'll give it 9191 okay cool now go to the main class let's run it again you can follow the spring native approach for this client but let's test it quickly okay since our producer is up and running 
and we have defined the client let's check how the things is getting work it took five seconds because this again load the byte code then it will um, uh, what it will do interrupted to the JVM lot of things it will do internal right so definitely it will take time I just want to verify the consumer so what is the URL we have defined in our controller slash customer service just go to the browser type localhost 9191 slash customer service okay just remove one then slash rest slash consumer I guess just let me verify it rest slash consumer okay cool so meanwhile I didn't add any object to the producer right so let me access the producer 8080 API to add some object to the list so that I can consume this particular endpoint will return me the list of available customer so I'll just I'll, I'll try from the begin because we added few different object right customer info at the same then this is the next fine now if I'll check this is what my producer application which is running on 8080 so if I'll go and check in the browser I have added why oh, it's added only one let me hit the endpoint 102 okay I did a mistake this should be post right fine now let me verify it I can see two object now since we write the consumer logic for this particular endpoint we'll see how, what is the result we are getting so just hit this endpoint can you see here we are getting the response back from my provider this is where the provider not this one this is where the provider which is running on port 101 and 10 one I mean running on port 8080 having two customer object 101 and 102 and the port 9191 is my consumer application and I was able to consume the endpoint by writing a single interface what is that interface just go to the client app go to the um, client package go to the service by defining what is the URL I want to access and what is the HTTP method type and what is the expected return type by defining these three fields, I can happily access any of the endpoint of my provider or my producer so if you want to access the post also just play with the other post exchange okay so this is how you can also use the HTTP exchange to define the declarative REST client in Spring Boot 3.0 so this is what all about the latest feature introduced as part of Spring Boot 3.0 and so far we discussed the theory as well as we understand through the practical example apart from that there are few more classes they changed um, similar to the step build factory which is there for spring batch and uh, something specific to the security lot of classes they changed once I will try playing with those classes then definitely I will upload the video for you ok so I hope you understand the context of the spring boot 3.0 so do let me know in a comment section if you guys have any doubts that's all about this particular video guys thanks for watching this video Meet you soon with a new concept.